Hello everyone, my name is Maya and I am the Allergic Chick. So this channel is all about living with food allergies. I've lived with food allergies for 23 years and I really want to share um, the information and tips and knowledge that I've learnt along the way. If you like my content um, and you're interested in seeing more, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon as well. I'll be posting brand new videos every Wednesday evening. Also, you can follow me on social media at Allergic Chick. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about travelling with severe food allergies and I'll be sharing my top five tips. So my first tip is to make sure to get medical travel insurance. Make sure to get one that covers severe food allergies. If it is anaphylaxis you suffer with, make sure you state that when you take out your policy. Also, if you have asthma, it's really worth putting that on your policy too. Getting this kind of travel insurance is really important if you have got severe food allergies because it ensures that if you have a big reaction whilst you're away that requires medical treatment, you are covered for this. There are now loads of different companies that do this. Just go to Google, type in medical travel insurance and you can find the best option for you on a comparison site. Tip number two is make sure you pick your airline carefully. So this tip is particularly important if you have an airborne allergy. My top tip for this is to make sure that you check the airline's policy on food allergies. You can check this online. Um, my advice is that if they don't have any kind of mention of food allergies or airborne allergies on their website, um, it's probably best to steer clear. Doing your research and picking the right airline is really important if you have an airborne allergy. If the airline does talk about allergies on their website, it also indicates that their staff are well trained on this and it means that the cabin crew have an understanding of allergies. Even if they do mention this on their website, it's always a good idea just to contact them before and mention that you do have a severe airborne allergy. A lot of airlines are really good about this now. If you inform them before and if you inform the cabin crew when you get on the plane, um, they can make an announcement. So say if it is a nut allergy, they'll make an announcement to all the passengers on board just saying, um, please don't eat any nuts while on this plane because we've got a severely allergic person on board. They can also stop the sale of any nuts on the flight. Some airlines that I've had a really brilliant experience with have been EasyJet um, and Norwegian Airlines. EasyJet are particularly good. Um, it's really, really easy to inform them before you go away. Like as soon as you make a booking, your email confirmation actually comes with um, an option at the bottom of the email to inform them if you do have a nut allergy. And the staff seems to be really clued up on it as well. Tip number three is make sure that you research your accommodation. So if you do choose to stay in a hotel that is catered, make sure to contact the hotel before to ensure that they can cater for your allergies. Personally, I always prefer to stay self-catered um, with kitchen facilities so that if I'm in a situation where there is no restaurants that I can safely eat at, I have the option of cooking at the accommodation. Also, if you have an allergy to pets, it's really important to check before that the hotel doesn't cater for pets. If you do have severe food allergies, it's also important to check that you're not too far away from an A&E um, or an emergency department just in case you do need that. And also make sure that you know how to dial the emergency services in the country that you're going to. Tip number four and probably the most important tip of all is make sure that you have all your medication. So I think it's really important to have, at the very least, two adrenaline auto-injector pens with you. And before you go away, just make sure that they're not just about to expire and they have plenty of date left on them. I also think it's a good idea to get a doctor's certificate just saying that you need to carry your adrenaline pens. This is mainly for security reasons at the airport. I've never personally been stopped before for carrying adrenaline, but it's always best to be prepared. So for my doctor's certificate, I actually um, downloaded a certificate from the Emirate website, which is the auto-injector that I use. Um, they have a downloadable certificate that you can print and then you can take to your GP and they can sign this just saying that you need to carry these all of the brands of auto-injectors do this. I've put a link to some downloadable medical certificates below in the description. Make sure that you also have a good supply of any other medication you may need. So this can be antihistamines, um, inhalers, etc. It's also really worth noting that if you're going to a country where the temperature is either really high or really low, it's important to make sure that you're storing your adrenaline correctly. So essentially adrenaline can go bad if it's stored at high temperatures for extended periods of time. So for Emeraid, um, they need to be stored 
below 25 degrees C and make sure that they're not frozen at any point. So to make sure that they're being stored correctly at the right temperature, I've got myself an insulated medication bag. So this one is really good um, because it is insulated um, and it has a temperature gauge right in the middle so you can see uh, what temperature your adrenaline is being stored at. So over the summer um, in the UK, it was really, really hot this last summer. Um, so it was good for me to know uh, how hot this case was getting. I also went to Florida over the summer. As you can imagine, the temperature there gets really, really high. Um, so what I did was I put an additional kind of thin cool pack uh, just to keep the temperature low. Um, and it was like a gel cool pack to make sure that it's not um, leaving loads of water all over my medication. So if anyone is interested in this particular case, um, it is by Alamates, and I'll put a link below in the description. So before I go away, I usually take an appointment with my doctor and ask for them to prescribe me steroids. This can be a good option if you're going on a long haul flight particularly, but make sure uh, to discuss that with your GP. Everyone's different, um, everyone may not need that, so that's something that you can discuss with your doctor. It's also a really good idea if you're going away with family and friends um, to make sure that someone knows how to administer your adrenaline if you need it in an emergency situation um, and also where it's stored. So make sure to train a couple of people in your party. So my fifth and final tip is to make sure that you get an allergy translation. So if you are going somewhere where you aren't fluent in the language, I think it's really important to make sure to have something written down stating what your allergies are in the language of the country that you're visiting. So just to give you an example, I went to Barcelona over the summer with my friends and I asked one of my Spanish friends, shout out to Dave, um, to translate my allergies for me. So here is the piece of paper that I took with me everywhere in Barcelona. So what this says is, I'm allergic to nuts and chickpeas. Please make sure that my food doesn't contain these ingredients and there's no cross-contamination with these products in your kitchen. And then I also um, got all of my different allergens translated just word for word just as a handy document for me to take round, especially if I'm reading ingredients labels and things like that. I think this is really, really important to do because you want to make sure that wherever you choose to eat out, um, you are making a safe decision. It's also really important to make sure that you mention cross-contamination because this may not be immediately obvious to a restaurant if they're not used to serving allergy sufferers. If you don't have a friend or a family member who can translate for you, um, I believe Allergy UK makes translation cards. I'll link them below as well. So that's it for my five tips for traveling with a severe food allergy. So one final thing that I'd like to add is to make sure that you enjoy your holiday. I know that traveling with a severe food allergy can be quite anxiety inducing, but it's perfectly possible to go away, be safe and have a good time. Don't let your food allergy stop you from traveling and stop you from having fun. So that's it for this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope that you found this video useful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you did like this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. I'll be posting brand new content every Wednesday evening. Thank you so much for watching. Um, stay safe as always. And if you are going on holiday, I hope you have a wonderful, safe journey.